When the Hyundai i20 N-Line first launched, it got a lot of hype. The next big thing people said. But a lot of journalists, dare I call myself that, made the mistake of comparing it to something that was already on its way out. <clears throat> so, looking back at it, I decided that we should re-review the i20 N-Line with a fresher or older set of eyes. So, today we are revisiting the N-Line talking about power, performance, practicality, and potential. First, let's get geeky. By the way, if you're already interested in sporty hatches and want to pick one up for yourself, this Polo TSI is up for sale. 2021, single owner, driven only 26,000 kilometers, and it is TDH verified. So best believe it could be one of the cleanest ones you'll ever find. If you're interested, hit us up on this number or head on to the driversup.com slash TDH classifieds. And who knows, we might have already listed the car of your dreams. Let's get straight into it. What is under the hood? Well, it is a fairly popular engine, the one liter turbo GDI engine. It's 998cc, three cylinder direct injection, and it's good for 118 bhp and 172 newton meters of torque. We've seen this block in a lot of Hyundais in the India roster, and it is definitely a very nice block. It is very refined and it is not the ceiling of what performance can be from this one liter three cylinder engine. We've reviewed the same engine in stage two setup and it pushes out 140s easily. So this definitely is something that you can go further in terms of performance. And looking at the numbers, we were getting 11 kilometers to the liter in mild traffic with some mixed styles of driving. So definitely this has the numbers to be able to convince your parents to buy this car. And considering that the numbers are so tasty from the car, you'd think that this would actually be an absolute market breaker. It would take the market by storm, but it really wasn't the case in the first stages of the i20 N-Line's life in India. More to talk about that later. First, let's go into the interior and see what it's like. I, for one, love the interior of the i20 N-Line. It's nothing like you've ever seen before in this segment with all of the blacked out trims, with the red accents to give it that intense sporty vibe inside the cabin. You've also got a very nice steering wheel that is straight from an i20 N that feels very nice with perforated leather and all of the trim pieces and switch gear is directed towards the driver so that it is a very involving place to be in. But it doesn't lose out on practicality. You've got cubby holes pretty much everywhere. You've got wireless charging and you've got Apple CarPlay just like any other modern car. And even the rear seats are wide and spacious, giving you a lot, a lot of place for your passengers. The dashboard is also pretty low. So even a newbie like your younger sister who's just got her driving license will not feel intimidated by driving the car thanks to the great amount of visibility all around. But enough talking the talk, let's see if the i20 N-Line can walk the walk. The more time I spent driving the i20 N-Line, the more I realized that I've really misunderstood the plot of the i20 itself ever since its launch. You see, we compare things as human nature, but most of the time we are right. However, I feel like I made a small mistake when it came to having a pre-notion to the i20 N-Line. You see, the N-Line plays a very different ball game compared to the Polo where the Polo was more of a compromise machine for performance. The i20 N-Line, however, is the complete opposite. It 
is a family hatch at the end of the day it still has all of the toys with no compromises and no stones unturned lots of space in the rear a lot of toys in the front a sunroof for Pete's sake everything that you would like from a modern car but it's just added the bonus of sportiness making this a really nice bang for buck in my opinion because you don't have anything in the market that provides as much as the i20 n line for the price that it comes out at yes the engine is not as umfy as you would like it to be or as torquey as the polos in fact i would argue that given that the i20 n line suspension is far superior compared to the polos it is much more direct and involving to drive once you find yourself in a kavi section of corners that being said there are a couple of things that did catch my attention while driving the i20 n line one the seven speed dct isn't as dct as you would like it to be it is not the snappiest of gearboxes and uh, in lower gears when you're driving around sit around the city it's pretty nice however when you're pushing the car the switches of gears are not as snappy as you would like them to be and it could just be a little crisper this could all be up to the tcu tune which could be mapped or it could just be reaching the limits of how physically fast this gearbox can actually be in fact i think the gearbox is ridiculously smooth and it is trying to preserve itself um a bit too much and you could give up a little bit of that smoothness for a snappier uh, tcu map but i am speculating at this point The other issue with this motor is that it feels a little laggy in the lower revs which can be frustrating when driving at low speeds. However, the engine performs well in the mid-range and feels responsive in the higher revs, although the power tapers off after 4500 rpm. The twin tip muffler produces a raspy sound especially from the outside when driving with a heavy foot. The upgraded suspension improves the n-line sporty feel, reduces body roll and allows for flatter cornering without significantly compromising ride comfort. Although the ride may feel stiffer on rough roads, it remains stable at high speeds. The steering has a good weight to it and provides good feedback, making the i20 n-line more engaging to drive. In conclusion, the i20 n-line is a fun and engaging hatchback to drive. Another thing I did notice is that this car being the most premium car of its segment and the most expensive car of its segment, it's got quite a lot of hard touch plastics pretty much. everywhere and it could uh, become a rattly affair the more you spend time with the car and the more the car ages i really feel like we missed the plot with the i20 n line comparing it to the polo in the first place you see it's like comparing lionel messi someone who has achieved pretty much everything under the footballing sun and then compared him with a young player that shows a lot of promise but hasn't achieved much yet because you know after all the goat is the goat i hope you get this reference <laughs> and last but not the least let's talk about how the hyundai i20 n line looks to me it looks like such a gen z car it screams lit af and busin and all of the other words that these kids have been throwing around lately and to me it doesn't seem like a bad looking car i really like the combination of grill and new bumper with the red accent in the front i also like how the sideboard looks on the side and even in the rear end you have a uh, bits of trim that are surrounding the rear windshield along with the extended spoiler and it all looks really in place nothing looks extra and that makes it such a tasteful looking car that it doesn't scream for attention nor does it ask for it and all i can imagine is lowering the car and putting 18 inch wheels on it that's when it will really look mean so what's my final verdict after spending the whole day with the hyundai i20 n line well i've always liked the n line for the past 16 years the i20 has been considered the go to family hatch in the country but the n line 
brings that a little bit further. It makes it the go-to family hatch for that person that wants to satisfy the petrol head in them. And it does that job very well, becoming a very good all-rounder. It can do the daily tasks very easily while still bringing fun to your life. And that's exactly what you want from a sporty hatch. At an X showroom price of 12 and a half lakhs, it definitely can be called a pricey car, but there is little to no competition. And considering all the toys that you get for that price, it definitely can be called bang for buck as well. That being said, do let us know your thoughts on the i20 N line and would you pick this over the Tata Altros Racer, which is the new boy in town? Do let us know your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.